Welcome back, everyone, to another, I'm going to tell you, another great episode of the Broker to Broker podcast. My name is Mark Summers. I'm the president of AIM. Uh, you know, but before I introduce this person, he was one of the first people that I met, uh, met through AIM, and it turns out he's pretty much right down the street from me after many, many discussions, and we didn't even know it. Uh, but today, I'm proud and uh, really excited to introduce the broker owner of Rockwood Mortgage, Rocky Belor. Rocky, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. This should be fun. Um, him and I like to razz each other a little bit. So, so to the audience out there, if we kind of razz each other a little bit, it's it's all in good fun. I promise you that. Right. So, uh, all right, Rocky. So, hey, listen, I know you're in the great state of Michigan here. Um, you know, we it's it's funny because I'm meeting more and more people from Michigan who are great brokers, and obviously you're one of them here. So, tell me, tell me about your business. Tell me how you got started. Um, just just go ahead, take it away. Yeah, so I got started in this industry about 15, 16 years ago. Um, I was a store manager at Best Buy, and I uh, was selling a TV to somebody. Somebody heard my spiel from Chicken Bones. They, you know, the name rhymes with Chicken Bones. And uh, they came and offered me a job as a banker. Well, when you're, you know, 21, 22 years old, you're like, all right, great, I'm up for it. Uh, that place taught me you know, a lot about the business of what you shouldn't do, you know, as far as uh, with an NMLS license, I don't even think there was NMLS licenses back then, but, you know, with this kind of responsibility. And um, I lasted about a year and a half, two years, made it, you know, past the ranks, senior banker, executive and executive club banker. And then I kind of just lost it one day. And uh, I had somebody trying to tell me to get a cash out refinance out of an old lady that didn't need it. You know, her closing costs would far exceed the amount of cash that she was going to be able to pull out. And uh, I just didn't close the deal. And I, I don't think anybody should have. And uh, they berated me in front of everybody. You call yourself a banker. And I said, F off, take your job and shove it. And I bought a hotel of all things. You bought a hotel? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, 2007, I just, you know, took all the money I made from Quicken, living at home and everything, and, and I bought a hotel. And uh, those were two to three of my most miserable, like, years of my life, you know, um, doing night shifts, doing, uh, you know, daytime cleaning because you can't find anybody. You can't afford to clean or uh, hire somebody to clean. And then uh, I was on a non-compete for two, two years, I think, from Quicken. So I got into commercial lending. And oh. that kind of kept my feet wet still. And uh, I, I haven't stopped ever since. But around 2015, 16, I got right back into residential mortgages again. Because, you know, there was a lot of people calling me. And I wasn't able to help them because I wasn't focusing on the residential segment. So... Uh, yeah, no, that's how I got into it. I know it's probably not a popular story seeing as where I started from, but you know. No, it's, it's fine. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that get thrown in from, I like how you said chicken bones, but quick and loans, yeah. you know what I mean? And and then they just become better from it. You know I mean? Truly, truly they do. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to dive into the, the background of quick and everyone knows that, but at the same time, no, you used it and you, you, so you started your own shop in what, 2000, when? 18. 18 and, and how did that go how how stressful was that it was very stressful there's no doubt about it because i'm managing you know now i have two hotels so like those two hotels multiple properties and investments and then also starting up a broker shop and at that time in 2018 i was closing my art gallery so i had an art gallery in birmingham you're familiar with birmingham oh yeah and uh you know I started seeing the online market, start, you know, start to take over and my business start to go a little bit like this. And there's nothing you can do to compete with those billion dollar companies. So uh, especially in the art market, you know, the mortgage game is a different story. So I closed up shop and the building that I owned in Birmingham, I, I was like, listen, why wouldn't I own my own mortgage shop and actually place it in the building that I own? You know what I mean? So that was the best decision I ever made. It, it definitely was not the the perfect timing because I was in India. My wife got sick at that time, right when the uh, credit company was supposed to come and inspect the location and stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm in India talking to her, you know, in the middle of the night, India time and walking her through. It was just horrible. And she was sick in the hospital. My wife was so uh, I couldn't fly back. So it was wow. just really bad timing. 
<laughs> but you've you've you you you've gained from it. You're good to go. You got a successful shop over there. So yeah. So let me get this straight. You have currently what do you do? Because I know you have a commercial, residential. Yep. Do you still have your hotels? Uh yes. Yeah. I I you know I uh, do different segments of private equity with a, a group of partners. Um, you know, obviously, guys, if you get into something like that, make sure you talk to lawyers. You uh, have them look at all your documents, every deal. Don't just get into it. Your your license is really important. Don't just do it because I'm saying that it's possible. But yeah, no, I got into all that stuff uh, before I started my own broker shop. So uh, right. yeah, and then um, different commercial buildings, uh, residential uh, rentals. Yeah, wow. you name it, I've done it. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, that probably makes you better as a residential broker. I'll tell you yeah. that much right now. So how do you balance your work life? You know, it, it's tough. And there's been many things I've tried and failed at as far as time blocking and, and all that. You have to really be willing to dedicate yourself to it. Um, and some of my employees are aware of everything I've tried. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, Rocky's probably still working at nine o'clock at night. And they weren't wrong when they would take those guesses. But now what I've done is I, I've kind of dedicated my life to time blocking and day theming. So I kind of look at it as if, if it works for these CEOs who are way more busier than I am, you know, of, of these fortune 50, 500 companies, why wouldn't I give that a shot? And I took a good two weeks to look at my average day and how many times I deviated from my task to go work on something else for another business or back end stuff when I should have been, you know, working on front end stuff. And I started taking notes, jotting down everything. Wasn't able to give my kid a bath because, you know, I did this or blah, blah, blah. You know, wife mad at me because I didn't come through on my promise. You know what I mean? And I don't blame her. At the end of the day, family also has its, you know, importance it is the most important thing so then i started taking all that data and then it took me another couple months to kind of perfectly gather like what days i dedicate for back-end stuff compliance payroll all that what day i'm going to dedicate to or actually what portion of the day i'm going to dedicate to um doing payroll for the hotel and then the other hotel maintenance room 252 254 need to get fixed there you know there's an issue there i'm going to get involved in that um so yeah it's a beautiful thing if you can really dive deep and you can get lost in the abyss of day theming but it's great it's a game changer i love that i, I actually never heard that day theming i like that so all right tell me tell me about your business tell me uh kind of business you guys do and, and i'm more interested in the residential side of things in all honesty uh but tell me like how many loan officers you have is it just you operations yeah. give me a rundown of your business so we have seven loan officers combined um so we do i'd say about 91 percent conventional um and the rest is you know i'd say two percent fha and the rest is you know va so um it's not that we're trying to spy well you know i believe in the law of attraction you're going to attract what you set out to attract right but it's not like we we I don't know, judge people based on FHA or their qualifications or bad credit it has nothing to do with that. You know, we'll take all comers, um, but it's been good. You know, we have a good, clean, conventional business for the most part. I love veterans. Um, if I could do 100 percent VA, I would do it in a second. And that's, you know, one of the reasons I joined Vetted VA. So, oh, so you're in Vetted VA. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, that. definitely. One of the best decisions I've ever made. I've been able to help not just business wise. I've been able to help a lot of veterans and learn a lot more. I mean, and that was Nathan and Chris's biggest plan uh, as far as what VA goes, you know, with the testing and the just throwing you in there and you have to do the research yourself so that when somebody asks a question in the group, you're forced to jump into the guidebook and look for the answer because it's in there. It's just a matter of finding it. That's, that's awesome. Okay. So do you have any operation staff? Yeah. So my wife, uh, she has an MBA in uh, accounting. So she helps me for the back end stuff uh, a lot, I, I have to say, even pregnant and after pregnancy, just recently, she's been amazing. She's been on top of it. And then uh, we have an LOA and a processor. 
Very nice. Very nice. So what are, what are some of the big roadblocks that you see right now? You know, I mean, obviously I, I know it's probably going to be, you run like seven different businesses, but at the same time, when we're talking about your broker shop, what are some of the big roadblocks you, that you've come across? Yeah. Just having enough time um, to react. And, and that's half the battle, right? Is coming up with proper plans in place so that you're not just reacting all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's gotta be the time and, and staying on top of, our book of business because you originate right mark absolutely 100 yeah. i i've been trying to get out of it and it, damn it it just will not let me to get out of it i just yeah. can't let go well especially you you're an og so you've been in this in this game for a long time and people know you and they request you by name right you can't right. just pass them off so it's really really tough in that aspect so um you know commercial i would say the hardest thing is funding a deal right now because of COVID. They don't want this in their portfolio. They don't want this, they don't want that. Um, you know, if something's really, really bad uh, for it, you know, for obtaining insurance for that business, the lenders don't want it, anything to do with it. So it's really hard for a restaurant or a hotel to find insurance right now, just regular business coverage. And these banks are aware of that now. So that's the biggest problem. And then of course, residential is man, inventory is just horrible. Yeah. Absolutely it's, horrible. It's it's nuts right now. I mean, it just, especially with purchases alone. I mean, in our area, you know, I'm seeing minimum like 20, $25,000 over asking price. Crazy. And when it comes to appraisals, the market hasn't caught up yet. The the, yep. the comparable sales just haven't caught up yet. So it's been a little bit of a grind, but in a, in a good way where, where these interest rates are, I mean, you're still saving them a ton of money, Absolutely. you know, in this entire process. So no, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting time right now, but you know what? I always say this, when is it not an interesting time in this industry? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, all right. So tell me, okay. So we're, we're on your company right now. I'm a big person about company culture. I mean, I've seen companies fail because there's no culture. I've seen companies, that I, I didn't think had the most talented people thrive because of their culture. So tell me a little bit about your culture over there. So our story is a little bit unique and different because um, 2018, I started the business and I did, we didn't originate our first loan under the company until 2019, right? Um, so just the LLC and all that was started in 2018. So once I came back from India, I started everything and then the pandemic happened not shortly after. You know, so it's been really tough because I have this building that's under construction. As you can see, we're doing all this stuff. And then on top of that, nobody wants to come in or my wife is like, you know, it's not safe. Um, so I get it. And we haven't been able to develop that company culture that you would get within four walls. Right. So the one of the most beautiful things Matt Ishbia lives by is that, hey, man, you got to work from within these walls. You know what I mean? I'm letting you know. What did you do? Maybe. 10 months during the pandemic, you let people work from home, right? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so then that's great. You, you gotta do what you gotta do, but we've been having what we call, you know, seven guys with a laptop, um, that kind of culture, unfortunately, as of recently, but, you know, we constantly, you know, meet with each other, speak with each other. We can reach out to one another at any time. There is no hierarchy dynamic, you know, when it comes to Rockwood, you can, get a hold of me, talk to me anytime you want. I'll go through guidelines, scenarios, structuring a deal with you. That's what I love most about Rockwood. You have random employees calling random people and they know that they can get the answer from them. Hey, Brian specializes in this, Rocky knows that. Um, and I'm not like those other people where, you know, I won't pick up the phone or I'll tell them, go to the, you know, 4,000.1, like, you know. Right. That's not a great answer. So for me, that's been tough. So we're going to be done with construction within the next two months. Okay. And then from there, yeah, it's, it's, we're, it's full speed ahead as far as culture goes. Yeah. So, so give me some ideas. Do you have anything in mind or that, that you, that you feel that you're going to do to make, you know, your culture phenomenal? Well, I mean, all I can do is copy what other people have done before me. So, um, you know, a lot of stuff like what Anthony Costa is doing. He's doing some genius stuff as far as you mortgage, um, you know, the training, uh, making sure that there's different uh, contests and things like that for the employees to take part of, which is not necessarily volume based, but based on, you know, productivity and honesty and what they're doing to take care of the client at the end of the day. I love those ideas. For me, that's everything. 
Um, because if you just do the, the chicken bones type thing where who has the most volume this month, that's not fair or fun for anybody. You know what I mean? Except for the guy who wins, obviously. But right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would be uh, very happy to take some advice from you. What works for you as far as culture? No, I mean, basically, basically what I, I do is within reason, we have a lot of, you know, experienced loan officers who've been in the game for, you know, 15 plus years. And, you know, they, they know how to kind of basically run their own business within our business culture. My big thing is I know for a fact that the number one most important thing when it comes to my business is the employees. My business isn't worth anything. If if seven if the seven guys in my office or eight guys and the operations staff walk out tomorrow, my business isn't worth a dime. It, it truly isn't. You know, what I mean, it's only what you can produce here because we don't get residual income. You know, what no. I mean, and then, and what happens if if the if the employee leaves? they're taking their book of business with them in essence, yeah. because we all work through our cell phones, especially through the pandemic. So my big thing is I take care of my employees every single chance I get, you know what I mean? Um, I, I'll have certain vendors and whatnot, send me gifts and I, I'm passing them right along. I'm taking them out to happy hours. I'm doing as much as I can where it's not just monetarily based. It's more or less like, wow, this guy cares about me. Yeah. You know, I'll hop out of my files to help my guys and, and girls and help them with their files first before I even help mine. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's tough thing to do, too. Everybody's got different schedules. We tried to do a bunch of those different events. Unfortunately, you know, like when half of the people can't make it, it makes you not want to yeah. do any event. Right. Um, like Top Golf. Top Golf is a great thing uh, for, you know, team building going out, spend some time with the guys, talk a little bit about business and, and uh, what else, you know? So I, I love that idea. You're absolutely right. Uh, our guys are everything as far as the business goes. Guys and, you know, gals, they are the face of the company. We can only extend our reach so much, right? right? So you're absolutely yeah. right. And we just have that, we just have that helping mentality too. So, you know, I was a big sports guy growing up, still, still love sports, but I play college sports. And, you know, the, the one thing I miss about all of it is just that team atmosphere, you know? So when, when I started my own shop and worked for another shop, you know, uh, was part owner of it, it, it was, I wanted that team atmosphere. So I know if, if I go on vacation, I got five people back here that will help me out while, while mm -hmm. I can, you know, recharge my batteries. Or if someone's out, I don't even care if they're in a golf course. I got you. We, we will help you. We don't look down upon each other. So, you know, I'm a big team guy and that's, that's the atmosphere I always try to throw out with, with uh, my company. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. So yeah, no culture, culture is a, culture is a big thing. You know, you got to You got to keep me updated uh, as, as you go on of how your culture, uh, you know, moves forward. So I would love to. So talk to me about a little bit here, throw you a little bit of a curveball, but not really. Talk to me about your tech stack. What what kind of technology are you using with your with, with your broker shop? So, you know, that's that's one of the best decisions I've ever made. It was actually switching to Arrive. Um, oh, so you're an Arrive guy. I oh like it. God, yeah, I, I am. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what I would do without Arrive. Yeah. So Absolutely yeah. How long have you had it now? So we were one of the first broker shops actually to, to go on the beta testing. Yep. Um, so us and, you know, Philadelphia mortgage brokers, obviously they were the first, but, um, yeah, yeah. It's just been a game changer and to see it evolve over time is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing about arrive? Not, and I'm not peddling arrive. I just want to hear no, because no. a lot of people struggle. I mean, this is your LOS. I mean, that's arguably the most important thing in your business. So I want to hear, you know, there's people that still use Calyx, nothing against it. I just don't get it. But what's your favorite thing about arrive? So it's great, you know, with the with the application links, you can do different things with different realtors. There's um, the income calculation. There's so many awesome things and awesome things that are on the way. Um, the two way interface between the lenders that are actually registered with uh, Arrive, that, that's awesome. Absolutely phenomenal. The one click register, that's yep. awesome. Um, yeah, there's going to be hiccups with all technology stacks. You know, there's there's nothing we can do about that. But the good thing about them is you can reach out to them. They will put a trouble ticket in. They will get working on it right away. Now, do they do do you use it for everything? The LOS, POS, CRM, or yeah. you, what are, what other technology do you use? So, or are you just uh, we use top of mind Surefire for our CRM. 
it's very robust. Um, Brian is, is my one of my guys, is all but mastered it. He's very, very in depth on it. Like, and uh, he knows every single feature. And then he finds out new features every week too. Me, obviously everybody with a CRM, it's just all about how you use it and how much you use it. So I use it for the bare minimal, like, you know, necessities. There's, there's not anything major that I'm using it for. Those things can get pretty, uh, pretty cumbersome. I'll say if you don't, yeah. I mean, you, you almost have to have like a CRM person sometimes if you really want to dive deep into that. Absolutely. And it's a game changer. I mean, if you're staying top of mind with your people, that's, they're, they're never going to go anywhere else. I mean, you know, anything but you messing up a deal obviously they're not going to come back but you know as far as uh reaching out to them calling them i'm one of those guys i'm an old school guy i like calling people okay so i i have a day set aside for people that uh you know i closed within the last six months just to stay top of mind with them another day where i reach out to some people that i haven't talked to in a while for me that works great Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, always staying in front of them. I mean, that's, that's the key thing because there, there's so many solicitations that go out there and oh a lot of these consumers, you know, don't know the difference and that's nothing against them. They just don't know the difference. Absolutely. No, no, hundred percent. What do you guys use for CRM? Um, my CRM really, I actually use the UWM CRM. The, uh, I use it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I mean, it, it, it kind of runs itself. Uh, you know, my, my assistant kind of is in charge of that. I've always told her, Hey, if you can find something better, or you want something better by all means, just let me know. You know what I mean? I said, but I personally just don't have time to dive into, yeah. you know, the, the better CRMs and which one does this and whatnot. So I leave that up to her so far. She says that it's uh, she said it's great. And for, for what we need to, to use it for, and we get quite a bit of business from it. And the other one that I use pretty much is Homebot. Okay. You know I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in HomeBot, and that's another one that I probably only use about five percent of the ability of it. Yeah. And I get a massive amount of business. Do you do you use it at all? So uh, I don't. Uh, Brian and a couple other guys do at Rockwood. So, yeah. If I wasn't so active on calling my people and staying on top of them, but you know, regardless, I, I'm still going to sign up for HomeBot because there's great value in that. You know, the open rate is something ridiculous, right? Something it's nuts. Yeah, it's, I've never heard of anything that high. Yeah, I mean, I have I have some some customers, you know, who are friends as well. They'll say, I can't wait for it to come out each month. I want to see what my value is doing. I want to see <laughs> where everything's at. And it's so funny because they're, they kind of nerd out on it. But Especially uh, in this market. They're like, I gained 100 grand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. So, no, I, I like it, you know, and this is, and I'll, I'll plug this, you know, we have great, great uh vendors and and partners in uh, at aimgroup.com if you go to Absolutely. our brokers or better network you know we've vetted all those out and and my big thing about our network that we have and and i think rocky you'll attest to this is it's it's not the fact that you know we want everyone to use them we don't get a benefit out of this whatsoever right. we just know that we have vetted these people out vetted these vendors out and these who we feel are broker friendly so i tell people all the time i think i've used about I think I'm currently using about 12 of them in the network. Oh my gosh. Wow. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you may use one, you may use 12, you may use all of them. It doesn't matter because the big thing that I thought was separating us and the big banks was, you know, the technology and resources. And now I think we have better. hundred percent. No. And I appreciate you guys doing all that vetting and taking the time to, to look at all those vendors and make sure that it's a, a great solution for us. And it's suitable for the, you know, broker nation, but um, yeah, like uh, lead pops. I did that yeah. for you guys. Um, Brian signed up for um, Homebot through you guys. I mean, like, it's amazing. You guys provide us a discount and you've done all the research on it. Um, you guys have a great relationship with a lot of the CEOs of those different vendors too, right? So absolutely. Yeah, if we need something, we can reach out to you guys if we're not getting an answer otherwise. That's awesome. Yeah, we're here. I mean, AIM itself is we're here for the brokers. We're here for you. We're here for our, my peers. You know what I mean? So it's it's phenomenal. I love this association. All right. So Rocky, I want you to expand on this a little bit here. So what we're going to do, I love to usually end these by saying, all right, you got you're, you you got a room full of people. You got a room full of brokers here. It's your floor. What kind of advice or 
I'm going to just say advice or what's, what's the message you want to get across all of them. That's going to help this, this great network that we have. So one of the, the greatest things that I've ever done was reach out to other OG brokers like yourself, uh, Adam P. Smith, uh, Anthony Casa, you know, all these people that have done it, done it really well and were successful at it and uh, pick their brain, you know, ask them, what would you do in this situation? Hey, do you mind, you know, mentoring me just on the side? I won't eat up too much of your time kind of thing. That's been a game changer for me. And, and the biggest thing that they'll tell you is delegate, delegate, delegate. Don't be afraid to hire. Don't be afraid to invest in your company. A lot of times newer brokers will get into this business. And the first thing they think is, well, shit, I'm not getting any leads. I, I have to invest in leads. Well, what kind of infrastructure do you have to be able to stay on top of those leads? Otherwise, you're just throwing money in the garbage. You right. Know I mean? So that's always hard to kind of talk some sense into those people and, and get them to see where I'm coming from as far as new brokers go. Um, and, and working hard, be strong, stay knowledgeable. I mean, success usually comes to those who are too busy to look for it. I mean, that's not just a saying, like I live by that. So I'm not just saying do busy work, but do, you know, read the guidelines, talk to other brokers that have successful foundations for their brokerage. Um, yeah, I mean, like Adam P. Smith, my gosh, he's changed my, transformed my business so much. Just a call, one call every week. And he, and he does that out of the kindness of his heart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, so, right. Which is amazing. Um, that's what I would tell people is, Stay diligent, keep your nose to the grindstone and, and always keep trying to get better. Uh, whether it be your reputation, your business, book of business, the amount of deals and volume you do. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head there. You know, I will say, and, and, and I'm not, this is a pat on AIM's back, not my back, not Katie, not anyone who's been a part of this, but the part of AIM that I love and I tell this to people all the time is before this association started, I really didn't hear too many people calling other brokers and asking them for advice. Um, I think AIM itself has kind of opened up the door to that by saying, hey, listen, we're all one community here, really, really about 20 percent of the market. Let's be honest here. Yeah, we're, we're gaining a lot of steam right now, but there's 80 percent more out there, you know, and, and I I talk to someone like you who's who's in my area. You know, what I mean, I talk to people in California, Texas, Maryland. I mean, I talk to all of them uh, and, and it's not threatening by any way. And. And I truly believe that this community really wants to help each other. It's crazy. It's it's amazing. Like Casey, Casey Finn. Yeah. Um, I'll still see him every couple of weeks. We talk. We talk about different aspects of business. That's a game changer. I mean, it doesn't matter that that Casey or I are not these power producers that do a hundred deals a month. But it's it's about doing however many deals you do, but doing it efficiently, efficient enterprise staying on top of your business and making sure that you're doing things to the best of your ability. And we talk about that kind of stuff and it's amazing. It literally is next level. Um, there's so many other brokers in the area that we can reach out to and talk to and uh, we'll have a beer together. Go out for a beer with one of your local brokers. They're not your competition. Right. There is no competition in this industry. Right. I love it. I mean, I've done it with you. Let's be yeah. honest. Jerry. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. And, and I encourage everyone who's listening to this, anyone who's an A member is, you know, and I even said this to, to one of the guys in my office. He's like, well, I don't know any all these people that, you know, I said, how in the hell do you think I've met them? You know what I mean? Like I reach out to them. I mean, it's fake. I mean, like, listen, this community is open arms. I'm telling you, it truly is you know, go through, see a couple of nice things that, you know, that you can relate to and just reach out to them. I'm telling you, you'll get great feedback. Absolutely. No, no, it's uh, go into one of those AIM, guys, go to an AIM event. <laughs> if you haven't been, I'm not just plugging it because I'm on the podcast. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's just one big informative party. That's what I tell people. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I had one of the best times of my life at uh, the first AIM and the second AIM. Absolutely great. And I met so many other brokers that, you know, like six degrees of separation. Some, sometimes you only know one broker by way of your city or because another realtor has worked with them and you meet up with them. 
you're meeting people from all over Hawaii. Um, you know, Andres J. Menard, he runs this stuff in Puerto Rico and he does right. it damn well. You know, <laughs> you get to meet amazing people like him. So uh, definitely go, guys. It's in Vegas. Please don't miss out on that. Well, thanks for plugging that for me, Rocky. No, it's it's, it's going to be a great time. Um, you know, I always look at it this way. You're It's going to be two days of great content. I promise you that. But then the lenders do a great job with after get togethers, we'll just call them. I don't want to call them parties, but they kind of are. Um, and at the same time, you get to collaborate with people you never would have before. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I like that. What was that again? An information party? <laughs> Uh, informative party. Informative party. I'm going to use that it. one from now on. So, no, Rocky, all good stuff you're you're giving us here today. We're gonna we're gonna end this here. I know you, you're obviously a really really busy man. So I just want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So brokers, if you want to get caught up on all of our past podcast episodes, please head over to aimgroup.com uh, backslash broker to broker. You can also listen to all of the broker to broker podcast episodes on iTunes, Spotify, Google podcasts, and anywhere you can download this podcast, download podcast period. So do me a favor, please subscribe to it, rate our podcast and leave a review. It helps us get the podcast out there and the word that brokers are better. And Rocky, you're one of them, man. You're one of my Thank guys. You. I appreciate you. Um, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. All Take right. care.